Hi, this is Joe Maciarz from A Tutoring Enterprises, and today I want to talk to you about how to graph compound equations and piecewise equations in Apple Grapher. Now, both of these compound equations and piecewise equations, they're the same thing. Uh, it just depends on which book you're looking at. Uh, they're a little different than compound inequalities, but uh, we'll take a look at what we're talking about right now. I'm going to pull up um, Adobe Acrobat, and I have one of my uh, textbooks that um, is kind of out of circulation with my students now with the school that I'm at. And uh, what I'm looking at is equation 40 here. And this looks like, you know, a fairly reasonable equation to uh, take a look at and see if we can actually graph this using the Apple Grapher. Uh, so basically, I'm just going to try to graph this. All right, so let's go to the grapher. Do note that uh, f of x equals our first thing is x, then a 2, then a negative 2, 2x plus 2. We're going to try to remember that. But we can come back here and take a look. Alright, I've got a new window up with the y equals. And we're going to go ahead and go over to the summation sign, which gives us the show equation palette. And we're going to look at the operators tab and this condition statement. Okay, and the number of conditions we want this time will be 3. Okay. Close the palette. We're going to open up this little window here so we get some room to do stuff. And uh, let's see if we can remember what it was. I think it was x in the first one. Then there was going to be 2 in the second one. And then negative 2x plus 2. All right. Let's put a couple of spaces there. Let's go see how we did. See if we got that right. Uh, x, 2, and negative 2x plus 2 x2 and negative 2x plus 2. Okay, so that's looking good so far. Let's go back there and now look at some of the conditions. Uh, we want it to be x. We want f of x to be x if x is less than negative 3. Okay, let's go ahead and jump back over here and tell it exactly that. x is less than negative 3. Okay. The next condition in our little formula says that if x is greater than or equal to negative 3 and less than 1, then we want it to be 2. All right. So negative 3 and 1 are boundary values. Let's go back over to grapher. So uh, now, unfortunately, with this, we can't type that in. Um, actually, let me make the mistake of doing that, and you'll see what happens. Let me go to the next one, and then we'll come back and do that. Uh, this one says, the third condition says if x is greater than or equal to 1. That one we're not going to have any problems with. So let's go back over here, we'll come down, and say x is greater than or equal to 1. Remember, to get the equal signs on the greater than or less than, you're hitting the option key with either the comma or the period. All right. Uh, so let's go up here and make the mistake that I said we didn't want to make. Uh, we would be tempted to bas basically just type in what we saw, which was negative 3 is less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to 1. And uh, if I remember correctly, this is not going to be happy. That's right. It can't deal with the compound inequality this way. It has to be done slightly differently. We're going to have to do it in the following way. We're going to have to say that x is greater than or equal to negative 3 and x is less than 1. Okay, and this it should be happy with. All right. And there it is. Let's zoom out a little bit so we can see it. There we go. We've got all of our good stuff. Let me grab my hand and move this up a little bit. Okay. We can see that those lines, uh, this line goes on to uh, negative infinity that way, and this one to positive infinity in the x directions. And um, now, the only other thing we might want to take care of that this doesn't do is to actually take care of what's happening at the various endpoints. To do that, we would want to come up to equation and get our point-making tool, our parametric Cartesian curve, and get rid of the parametric part of it. We've seen this in a number of videos now. 
and uh, you have to look at the actual points. You have to figure them out. So let's say for this first bottom equation, which is represented by uh, the x for x less than negative 3, when x is negative 3, well, you put in negative 3, and you get y being negative 3. So we're looking for the point negative 3, negative 3, which will end up over there. And actually, we want it to be an open circle since... Uh, basically, it does not include, the inequality sign does not include the equal sign. All right, for the next point, uh, we would be putting negative 3 into this equation. Now, we can shortcut this by copying, making a new equation, deleting out the y equals, and just pasting the old one in. It takes me longer to say it than to do it. Uh, let's come down here and now change y to that value, 2, and we'll get a point right there. Uh, the next point is going to be at 1, 2. So again, we can copy, paste, come back in here, change this to 1, 2. And then finally, we have this line, which when you put in 1 for x, you're going to get 0 for your y value. So again, we will copy and paste. And so we're going to get 1, 0. OK. Now, we might want to clean this up because these, of course, all look like open points, and that's not quite what we want. We would like to see this point, which represents this one here, and this point to be, which is this one, to represent closed points. So that's this one and this one. I tell you what, before I do that, though, let's, let's change the color on all of this. Uh, let's go to Inspector, uh, and... So we notice we're doing not only the lines, but the points as well, all at one time. This is, is going to cause a little bit of problem, but we'll, we'll deal with it. Uh, so we're going to make all the lines or circles uh, green. We're going to fill them all in, and we'll actually have to unfill a couple of them. And uh, that's all we need for those. Okay. So now we're left with something that looks like this. Um, actually, I'm not happy with the point sizes. I like the those points a little smaller. Let me reduce those sizes just a little bit. Okay, that makes me a little happier. And then it was these two that we want to be open circles. That That is this uh, one at negative 3, negative 3, and the other one at 1, 2. And you can see they're highlighted here. So let's go ahead over to Inspector, and we'll take out the color from the inside, making it snow. And there we go. So uh, now if you want these to be a little bigger, um, I mean, it's a choice between either keeping the circle sizes the same or making sure that these are, are clear. Uh, you can do that too. So let's come back over there and highlight just these two. To highlight this and skip this, what I'm doing is I'm moving over to here, hitting down the Command or Apple key, and then clicking. And so that's allowing me to select you know, various ones. Uh, without uh, a range of them. If I want to select a range, I click on one, come over here and hit the shift and then click, and that gets them all. But uh, click, command click will give me that. All right, so let's go back over here and we're just going to make that circle size just a little bit bigger, just to really emphasize that they're open circles. All right, so that's our piecewise compound function. Um, there is one other one I want to show you, um, or do for you. Actually, I don't want to do it in this. Let me get rid of this. Let me pull up a new window to do it. Uh, this also will show another little method. We're just choosing 2D in default. You can play with some of the others to see what they look like. At some time in the future, I will as well. Uh, what we're going to do, in fact, let me go back over to this, this deal right here. The PDF of the algebra book. Um, I've got this greatest integer function that I highlighted, or bookmarked, I should say, and we've got a integer function, greatest integer function that is graphed already here, and I wanted to see if we could just do that. Now there is probably some quick ways of doing that, but I wanted to show you that we could also, you know, generate it the hard way because you may have situations where you want to generate something that, you know, isn't built into the graphing calculator. Uh, typically, when you don't uh, include this part here, you have a, a very special function that 
is very good for the littler kids. Um, it's the birthday function, of course, because uh, basically they're zero years old right up until the day that they're one year old and suddenly they're one year old. And uh, this, of course, has a lot of meaning for us when we have that certain day when we're either 18 or 21, depending upon the state you're in, I suppose, that uh, you get to actually uh, join the other people at the bar. And I won't say any more about that. All right, so let's go back over to uh, the grapher and try to get that same thing. Now, um, I actually had some problems with this particular version with doing my parametric equations, so I, I'm, I've changed how I'm going to do this. But uh, what I'm going to do first is actually generate the, the points for this. And I guess I don't really need that equation. I'm going to just get rid of that. So let's go up here and uh, choose an equation from the template, the Cartesian curve. And we're just going to do some points. Now, I'm, at this point, I'm only going to do... Well, let's do a bunch of points, but uh, I don't have what I need to do this. So let me go ahead and just get this set up right now. In fact, I'm just going to put in 0, 0, just to give us something, because I forgot to put something in. So we're going to put in another new equation, and this equation we're going to set up as a parameter. We're going to let A equal uh, various things, and this is how you let it do various things. You can say I want it to do 0, uh, 1, dot, 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 up to, let's say, 10. And I think it allows, in this case, uh, for this version, at least 22 of these values before it starts screaming at you that you can't do too much, that many. Uh, so now you're going to see I'm going to get something quite different when I come over here and plug in A and A. Well, it's not quite what we had in mind, but we've got all the dots that we want. Now, um, I'm not going to fix that right now. I'm just going to copy and paste the uh, new one. I'm on a new equation, paste the other one. And um, now what I want to do is keep the uh, a value, or sorry, the y value the same and keep the x value, let the x value be a plus 1, which will be the other side of the line segments. And now you're starting to get a feel of what we're, what we're doing here. All right. Um, Let's click on both of these, and uh, there's a few things we can do, and I can see that my inspector is outside of your view, so let me close, uh, bring my window in a little bit. Okay, so clicking on inspector, we're going to again change these to, to green, but I'm also going to get rid of this polygon mark here. That's what's creating these uh, diagonal lines. I don't want that. Let's get rid of that. Uh, I also want these circles to be a little smaller um, at this point, so we're going to go ahead and do, uh, tell you what, let's also fill them in, even though they won't all will, they won't all be filled in. Okay, so now we got the points set up the way we want them. Uh, let's go ahead and get the line. Well, I found the better way to do this is to do the, the conditional, the built-in conditional, so I'm going to go ahead and show you that rather than the parametric equation. That's this one right here. Uh, is, except instead of three conditions, we only want one condition. Okay, and let's close that. So what do we want? Well, we want y to equal the a value. That, that's going to give us horizontal lines. Let me put some spaces in there. And then we'll switch over to uh, this, where we want this to go from x is greater than a and x is less than a plus 1. And there are our lines. And you can see why I wanted them to be green, because this line here isn't going to be very visible on the x-axis. So let me come back over here, make this green, close that down. All right. And you're still having a tough time seeing it, but you can at least see it. Now the last thing I want to do is change these last points back into open dots, and we can do that again by making the inner color snow. And I might make them just a tad bit bigger again, like I did in the previous graph. And there we go. There's our birthday function. And if it was somebody's birthday, I'd probably sing happy birthday and make a fool out of myself. But uh, I don't know of anybody's birthday, so I'm not going to do that. Uh, I hope you enjoyed uh, learning about these piecewise and uh, compound functions. 
Uh, this again, this little A equals trick can be used in quite a number of videos. I think it's in some of the demos as well. Uh, let's get over to the final screen. And uh, again, this was how to graph compound and piecewise equations on the Apple Grapher. Um, my business is A Tutoring Enterprises. It's a tutoring business, and my name is Joe Maciars. My website is at www.210.com, and my email is tutent at neb.rr.com, and you can get a hold of me at 402-421-3536. I do online tutoring uh, for anybody around the world that's interested, and uh, also in-person tutoring here in Lincoln, Nebraska. Um, my website has the prices and uh, my hours and all that great information. Please check it out. And um, let me come on back down here. We're going to have a white screen where it's just going to fill up with links to uh, the various how-tos that I've already done. And in the future, you'll see more links here to hopefully more how-to videos. And uh, if you like this video, give it a like. And... Uh, Hopefully you can include it, uh, maybe put it in your playlist if you're a teacher. Keep it in mind um, because uh, the kids love working with the technology and I know a lot of schools have the, the Macs and so this would make a great addition to your, your classroom, especially if you don't feel like doing anything uh, lecture-wise on the board. So um, I hope you enjoyed the video and uh, have a great day.